Immunity describes the ability of the body to resist infection. An infection can be usefully defined as the growth of microorganisms within a tissue. So there's bacteria and viruses absolutely everywhere in the world, way up in the air, way down in the ground. There's more bacterial cells in and on us than there are cells in our body. We just live in a complete soup, if you like, really, of, of bacteria. They're absolutely everywhere. And yet, just under the skin, and in the organs of the body, it's completely sterile. If it's not sterile, that means there's microorganisms there, and that is an infection. So how is this amazing feat attained at normal temperatures and pressures? How do we keep the inside of the body sterile? And this is the subject of immunity, the ability of the body to resist infection. And classically, immunity has been divided into two types. So here we have immunity. And classically, it's described as being innate immunity, which is non-specific, or acquired immunity, which is specific. But let's run with the innate, non-specific immunity first. Now, innate means that this is kind of inborn. We possess this as a result of the physiology that we're all equipped with. And it's non-specific. This means it acts against a wide variety of potential infecting organisms, a very wide variety. So it's innate. We don't have to be exposed to the infection to be immune to it. So with innate immunity, you're already immune. You don't have to learn how to be immune. It's already there. And it's non-specific, acting against a wide variety of potentially infecting pathogenic microorganisms. So how is this innate, non-specific immunity achieved? Well, the first thing you'll see on the map here is normal anatomy and physiology. If you like, these things are inborn. So, for example, if the skin is intact, that's going to keep a lot of organisms out. If the mucous membranes are intact, that's going to keep most organisms out as well. And we'll look at these in more detail later. But these are things that are there as a result of normal anatomy and physiology, inborn mechanisms, physical barriers that keep bacteria out, and chemical barriers as well, but we'll look at that later. So normal anatomy and physiology first. And the next component of the innate, non-specific immune system is inflammation, the inflammatory reaction. And again, this is a generic reaction. So inflammation, you might know that you recognise by heat, pain, redness, swelling and loss of function in a tissue. They're the classical signs of inflammation, aren't they? And the inflammatory reaction is very protective. So in inflammation, you get vasodilation and useful chemicals come out of the blood. White blood cells come out of the blood to mediate local immunity and to promote local healing. And indeed, inflammation is the essential first stage of the healing process. But it's non-specific in that the inflammatory reaction is the same, regardless of the cause. So inflammation can be caused by mechanical trauma if someone gets a bash or a cut. It can be caused by chemicals if you get acids or alkalines in your eye or other body tissues. Or it can be caused by thermal injuries or there can be abnormal immunological autoimmune type reactions. Or it can be caused by infection. Or it can be caused by radiation, as you know if you've ever been out in the sun for too long and got sunburn. And it can be caused by ischemia, lack of circulation. And it can be caused by the presence of necrotic tissues. So there's lots of things there that can cause the inflammatory reaction. But the reaction is always the same. It's a generalised reaction to protect the body and to promote healing. So there's inflammation. Now phagocytosis is involved in a lot of the innate immune mechanisms and this is cell eating. So large cells called macrophages are phagocytic and smaller cells called neutrophils are also phagocytic. They will eat bacteria and viruses. Cell eating. Now another part of innate immunity is complement. 
Now, complement is a series of over 20 immune proteins found in the blood. And there's a complement cascade. And this complement cascade will be triggered when there is immuni immunological reactions going on in the body, or it will also be triggered by the presence of bacterial cells in the body as well. But again, we'll look at this in more detail. But complement is a system of immune proteins that promotes immunity and helps to kill bacteria and is triggered by the presence of bacteria. Viral infections are also a problem. Now, viruses are intracellular parasites. They go inside the cell. So it's a bit tricky to get at them to kill them. So there's interferons are actually chemicals which interfere with viral replication. And again, in the same way that complement will act against a very wide variety of bacteria, interferon will act against a very wide variety of viruses. So again, it's a non-specific mechanism. And again, we don't have to be exposed to the infectious organism before these systems will kick in. These systems will work straight away, providing innate non-specific immunity. And there's also some very useful cells called NKs, the natural killer cells, the large lymphocytes. And these large granular lymphocytes are a particular class of white blood cell that will directly kill virally infected cells and will kill various other things as well. So they're killer cells. So all these mechanisms are innate, they're non-specific, they don't have to be learnt and they're acting against a wide variety of potential infections. Now the yellow pathway on immunity is different. This is acquired or specific immunity. Now if you acquire something, at one time you did not have it and then you get it. You acquire it. It's an acquired immunity. So at one time you were not immune to a particular organism but then you acquire it, you get it as you go along. And this is specific. It only acts against one particular type of organism. So whereas the innate was non-specific, acting against a very wide spectrum of potential organisms, the specific is only acting against one particular organism. And it's acquired because we must first be exposed to the organism in order to develop immunity to it. So the innate, we don't need to be exposed to the organism to be immune to it. The acquired specific, we do need to be exposed to the organism first in order to be immune to it. An acquired immunity, specific immunity, is classically divided into two types. Active acquired immunity and passive acquired immunity. Let's think about the active first. Now, active immunity well, indeed, all acquired immunity, depends on the formation of immune proteins called antibodies or immunoglobulins. So you need to make these antibodies. The immune cells must make these antibodies. And these antibodies are specific to combat a particular type of infection that we call an antigen. An antigen is anything the body recognises as being foreign. And when you've got active immunity, this means that your immune system has made its own antibodies to the specific antigen that is causing the infection. So how is it that we make antibodies to certain organisms? Well, you can actually be exposed to the organism itself and it can cause infection. Now, if we were infected by a particular bacteria or virus, we will make our own antibodies to combat that particular infection. Now, some infections can make you very ill. Some infections can kill you, obviously, if this immune system doesn't kick in quick enough. But other times you're exposed to bacteria or viruses and the immune system can work fairly quickly and we might not even know that we've got sick in the first place. But the active immunity, the production of the antibodies, depends on exposure to the particular organism. And vaccination will do the same thing. So vaccination, typically you're, typically you're giving mushed up organisms or dead organisms. But they're chemically the same as the living organisms. And because they're chemically the same, the immune system will recognise them as being foreign 
it will say, just a minute, there's foreign material here, let's make antibodies to it to get rid of it. And then if you are subsequently exposed to the actual organism, well, you've already got the actively produced specific immune antibodies to the infection. And hopefully you won't get sick at all, or you won't get anything like as sick as you would have done had you not been vaccinated. So a quite specific immunity can be active, it can also be passive. Now passive immunity is when you enjoy immunity because you have antibodies to a particular infection, to a particular antigen, but you haven't had to make those antibodies yourself. Someone else has made them for you and given them to you, which is very nice of them, of course. It's passive. We haven't made the antibodies ourselves. So when could this happen? Well, lots of antibodies go from mum's blood into baby's blood during the later stages of pregnancy by what's called transplacental transfer. They go through the placenta from mum's blood to baby's blood. This means that when baby is born, baby has all the antibodies in his or her blood that were in mum's blood. So all the immune exposure mum's had during her lifetime is wonderfully transferred into baby. So that when baby is born, they've got antibodies to everything that mum is immune to. And it's just as well this happens because if it didn't, babies would have no resistance to anything they would all get infections, they would all die probably within about a week of birth, and that would be the end of the human race. This is absolutely vital. But the problem is that the antibodies that have got into the baby's blood via transplacental, the transplacental route, don't last for that long. They only stick around for two, three, four months, that kind of time span. But we'll see why that's important in a minute. Another way you get passive immunity is colostrum and milk again from mum. So colostrum is the seriously fluid that you get from the breast when breastfeeding is just initiated in the first day or so of breastfeeding. That makes that a very important period of time because you get the colostrum. Very important baby gets that. And then there's also antibodies from mum in breast milk, another reason that breast is best. Occasionally we can induce passive immunity by giving injections of immune globulin. For example, before we had vaccination for hepatitis A, we used to give gamma globulin, and that gave some immunity against the hepatitis A virus. Now we give the immunization, we're up on this one now, the vaccination, which is much better, lasts for much longer. But occasionally that's done, but in, in modern healthcare, we don't do that very much these days. And the last thing I want to say about passive immunity is the active on passive immunity. Now, if babies got antibodies from their mother, or if we've given antibodies in an injection, then I think you can see that that's going to give passive immunity. But it doesn't last for very long. But of course, when baby's born, as soon as they're born, they're going to be exposed to lots and lots of antigens, potential infections, in the environment. So this means that the baby will start making their own antibodies via the process of active, specific acquired immunity, which is good. But while the baby's doing this, they're still immune because they've got their mum's antibodies. So what they're doing is they're developing their own active immunity while passively immune. It's absolutely brilliantly simple. So the baby's immune but still developing active immunity. And even though the passive immunity only lasts for a few months, it's absolutely vital because the baby will make active immunity, which lasts for decades uh, into their lifespan. So immunity, this is my mind map of it, and we're going to look at these in some more detail now.